Netherton was once home to Theophilius Dunn, the self-styled 19th century urban necromancer. And as if being called that, and in fact just being that, isn't stupendous enough, he also claimed to have found a cure for toothache and a tracking system for lost or stolen property. I could have done with Theophilius this morning when my son was crying over his mislaid Batman cape for two hours solid. Nothing elevates a town like a cohesive urban motif. You might disagree, but you'd be wrong. When I've finished filming my version of King Kong, set in Bilston, I'm going to start work on a version of 2001, A Space Odyssey, set in Netherton. This is the room at the end of the ride. We're still casting for the massive baby. Not content with having spawned Theophilius Dunn, Netherton also saw fit to give us Joseph Darby, champion jumper of the world. His trick jumps included clearing a canal in two jumps, appearing to make the second leap from the water's surface, jumping on and off eggs without breaking them, and the slightly less impressive appearing to jump onto a person's face whilst they lay on the ground and off again. I do love a good black country and western, don't you? Wild Bill Hickok was born in Lye, just down the road from here, along with probably half the other pseudo-psychopathic miscreants who limped, shot and drawled their way into western folklore. If you listen carefully, you can hear the tides of the world crashing over one another before they're absorbed back into the huge swelling sea. Someone needs to slap a preservation order on this kind of super 70s outdoor bricolage because there's tons of it round here folks, but it won't be here forever. In an audacious move, inspired purely by the leaden march light and the vagaries of my own bubbling consciousness, I have decided also to turn this concrete bricolage with no knowledge whatsoever of what the term really means. The term bricolage appears courtesy of the Cummings Your Way online dictionary, which also gave you such eternal gems as Cummings World and Retroscendence.
When I was a kid, it was somehow all mixed up together. The bottle green canal glass reflection of the rust brown black country aesthetic. The pregnant cityscapes of Giorgio de Chirico. The path of least resistance by the Human League. The interior shot of Bilbo Baggins's dwelling at Bag End. The opening credits of Mary, Mungo and Midge and the moth-eaten Victoriana of the Strand magazine. Now, in middle age, the strands are beginning to loosen, beginning to separate. I'm not sure which I prefer. Stour Bridge, eight and a half miles, 25 locks, and a lot of water under the canal bridge. It is, quite simply, England, and therefore the world's best named bridge. One of the world's most beautiful views. You'd probably disagree, but boy would you be wrong. Makes me feel like Charlton Heston at the end of Planet of the Apes as well. But then almost everything does. Know what I mean? Sometimes the black country feels like a blackened patina spread thinly on the surface of the Vale of Arden. Other times though, you can sense it going right down to the Earth's molten core. <laughs> 